Bunny the dog is a sentient dog that presses buttons to communicate with the people around them. From my perspective, they seem burdened with this newfound power, asking questions like, why Bunny? That seem to point to some more existential questions, like, who am I and why am I here? Well, I band together with two of my friends to transform Bunny's existential existence into a game! Not only that, but we did it in two days for the Global Game Jam. Disclosure. Bunny, please don't come for me. We're not making any money, and it's a parody. I'm sure you're a really happy dog and you're really well taken care of. We're not selling this game, but if you want to collab, hit me up. Hello, my name is Jonah, I am an indie game developer in Chicago, and I am trying in earnest to make that my job. My main project is a game called You Shall Not Pass, where you play a shman off the wizard and herd your sheep to safety while tending to your farm. It's a cozy game about magic, sheep, adventure, and growth. But enough about that, that's not what this video is about. This video is the first video in a series about the other games I've made as a developer. Little one-off dives into those smaller projects. Today, we're looking at a game I made two weeks ago in just two days with two friends, wow, that's a sign, called Bunny Says. To understand the game, you should first know why the game. Bunny Says was made for the Global Game Jam. It's a large jam known by many game developers, and this year's theme was Make Me Laugh. When I saw the theme, I panicked. There's a reason I went into game development and not stand-up comedy or improv. And that's because making people laugh is stressful. At least I think so. My roommate would disagree. She is a stand-up comedian. Making a comedy game was a daunting <gasps> task for me and my team members. I submitted the game, along with many others, through Chicago's Indie City Games organization, who partnered with Portland's Pig Squad and North Carolina's Triangle Interactive for a coast-to-coast -coast collaborative game dev game jam experience! <laughs> I paired up with two friends from the Chicago game dev scene, which is a pretty robust and amazing game dev scene, I highly recommend. Usually, I make games alone, which means I do the programming, I do the art, I do the music and the sound effects, the UI, all of it, whatever. Well, aren't we Miss Self-Sufficient USA? But not this time, baby. One of my conspirators is a legendary programmer. The other, an up-and-coming artistic icon. So with art and programming covered, what's your boy gonna do? Good question. It is always straight to the, to the meat meaty bits with you. I was in charge of music, sound effects, and programming the UI. A nice change of pace from my usual game dev experience. So now you know why is Bunny Says. Now you need to know what is Bunny Says. Bunny Says is a two-player spin on Mad Libs, the ancient comedic art form of filling in the blanks of a story with words like itchy and coochie to make a silly story. Let me break down the gameplay. Stage one. Player one inputs five nouns, five adjectives, and five verbs of their choosing. Once the player finishes inputting their words, stage two begins. Stage two. The human on the couch asks a question, prompting player two to try and respond by pressing the buttons Run. on the floor, each programmed Run. with one of the words that player Help. one entered in stage one. The goal is to create a cohesive response that will maybe make players one and two laugh a little. If you get bored, just press space and drop a dookie on the floor. An obvious mechanic for a game about a dog. So how did we come up with this idea? We started with many, many other ideas before we came to this one. We talked about making a game where you play as a cat and knock precious items off a shelf. A Dyna Dash game for elderly folk. A kitty carnival game. A spin on Operation. And many more. Ultimately though, when we thought about the funniest games we had ever played, they were often multiplayer games that outsourced the funny to the players. Like Quiplash and Gothic Phone and Mad Libs. So we hoped we could do the same. We wanted to make a game with multiple players, and a spin-off of Mad Libs seemed 
the most in scope for a 48 hour period, which is an important consideration when you're making a game in a really, really tight time period. Bunny the Dog came to mind as a modern kind of version of Mad Libs in its own way, and thus the game concept was born. I cannot take any credit for it. I have to credit the amazing artist of our team. Now, in a previous video, one of you lovely viewers commented that you wanted to see a little bit more of the code that goes into these projects, and that got me thinking. I would love to add a deep dive segment to my videos that explores one part of what I'm talking about in deeper detail. Alas, I didn't do a ton of interesting code in this project, but I did do the music. So for this very first segment, I'll be showing you how I did it. Let's go! Making music is always a little hard for me. Making the code and the art is easier because it's easy for me to step back and look at it and just know, is this working, is it not working? You can usually tell pretty quickly but not with music. Pardon my French, but with music, you really gotta put your pussy into it. And some days you just don't have any pussy left to give. I don't really know how to be utilitarian with music the way I can with art and code, but regardless, you just gotta sit down and try. When I make music, I work in Ableton. I used to work in Logic on my MacBook, but alas, that computer is from 2010 and I don't have a working Mac anymore. So Ableton it is for my Windows setup. What I'm doing right now is on a Windows computer. I wanted to make something that starts light and breezy, think minigame music that's palatable and inoffensive. I then wanted Bunny to have the spotlight and sing us a little verse, breaking through the elevator of game music to let us know how they really feel before returning to the easy breezy game music. I started all of this with a melody. I just hummed around looking for a melody that matched the energy I was going for. When I do this, I'll just hum into voice memos app so that I have it documented and I don't forget. All right, this is proposed theme for the Global Game Jam 2024. Word game. Play as a dog and try to say And then I go back into Ableton with that voice memos app and I just pencil in what I like. Some people use a keyboard to input music into Ableton. I just use my mouse and sometimes the keyboard, but mostly my mouse. I then hummed out a bass line to go with the melody, figured out what those chords were and just was like just imagine playing a bass and being like, ooh, what do the bass players do? It's like, it's like rhythm, but bass, you know? And so I hum that, pencil it in, and now we got melody and bass line. To round it out, I figured out what the chords were, which I did for the bass as well, and I added some keyboard pads just to round out the sound. Historically, I haven't really added much percussion to my game music because it scares me a little and I don't have much experience doing it. But for this game, I felt like it needed percussion to have that game light and breezy music. So I jumped into Ableton's rhythm presets. I listened to a few until I found one that had the energy that I wanted. Eventually I found a match that was overlaid with the music that I added. And this section, part A, the light, easy, breezy music, was done. I later went back and added a stringed guitarish instrument just to add a little bit more texture to it all. Now onto the verse. For the verse, I wanted Bunny, the dog, to sing to us. So I thought it would be fun to overlay vocals with a heartfelt instrumental section. To do this, I sat down at a piano and I played around with chords until I found chords that worked and a melody that felt good. And I wrote some lyrics that I thought summed up what it was I was trying to say. The gist of which being, Bunny is this dog that feels misunderstood and is limited to the words available on the buttons when they have so much to express. And also, what's the point of expressing yourself if no one listens? What's the point of these words if no one makes the effort to understand you? Much heavier than the actual bunny, I'm sure, but I thought it was fun. I recorded all this in my voice memos app for the same reason, so that when I come and sit down, I have it recorded. I'm not reliant on my memory, which is very fallible. And I penciled in some instrumental chords from the piano and got to singing on this mic that I'm using right now. Hello, microphone. So I just sang right into that. I was like, ain't it hard being misunderstood? So that's what I recorded. For my other game, You Shall Not Pass, I got a free instrumental pack called BBC Orchestra that plugs straight into Ableton that I absolutely adore. So I used that plugin in Ableton to 
add some violins, some cellos, some horns, to really get into that ooey gooey, heartfelt, symphonic sound. I wanted the verse to grow and build momentum to emphasize that sappiness, so I started with some clarinets that mirror chords in the piano. I then added some tuba to round out that bass and layered that with the stringed bass from the chorus. I modified what the stringed guitar in the chorus was doing to something new to add a little bit of that texture. And if I wanted to make it sappy and emotional, I had to add violins. So I added some violins doing some long, sappy chords. and then brought in some cellos to mirror that and pull the sap out of those strings. To build momentum, I added some horns in the second half to fill the sound and make it feel like it was building to something. I abruptly end it as though the dog forgot themselves and had to return to being a dog. To really drive home that this was the dog singing, I added some dog whimpers and dog barks to the first chorus, and then as the dog barks, I overlay myself trying to bark. It's, it's pretty heinous. And as the dog barks, I begin pitching the dog bark down with my voice, and then I say, wait, I have something to say. <coughs> I have something to say. And then the dog sings, which is just me singing. I added some vocal effects to make it more reverby and move ear to ear in an attempt to make it just feel sappy and a little overly dramatic. I think it works. I'm still learning how to mix and master sounds. That is not my specialty, but I'll take it. With the verse done, I go back to the chorus and do the chorus twice more and then the verse once more, but with no vocals, just to avoid the listener feeling like it's being super repetitive, like I just heard this expands that loop by another minute so the player doesn't want to turn the music off straight away now rather than just play the song for you you've been watching a while now i think it's time to give you the goods let's show you the game footage music words code all of it a small note i will be interrupting the game footage with a little montage of bunny during the verse that is not actually how the game runs without further ado i present to you bunny says <laughs> Hungry, 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 hungry. Wait, I have something to say. Exciting. Murder. Paralyzing. Bunny. Mailman. Help. Murder. Bunny. Mailman help murder bunny. Paralyzing. Bunny. Bone. Dreadful. Mailman. Murder. Mailman. 
hell. Bunny. Murder. Mailman help bunny murder. That was Bunny Says. If you liked it, leave a comment. If you didn't like it, leave a comment. It's always good to know what works and what doesn't. If you made it to this point in the video, I love you. You're so cool for that. I'm hoping to continue this series with other games that I've made in the past. I thought I'd ask you what it is you are interested in seeing. We have five potential contenders. Number one. Sewer Sewer. Play as rats in the sewer with your friends in a Cooking Mama style game where you scramble to fulfill garment orders in time for the princesses above. Game number two, No Can Do. Play as a little pixel man crash landed on a desert planet. Collect resources, find your friends, build a base, grow a farm, explore, and survive. Game number three, Survivors. Play as a witch doctor controlling a time-traveling tank, fighting off hordes of monsters to rescue your friends. If you perish, travel back in time and try again. Game number four, Finding Fido. My very first game posted anywhere ever. Play as a ghost making their way through the underworld to reunite with your best buddy, your ghost dog. Game number five. Autumn's Bounty. Play as a pixel person and try and save your potluck after a storm destroys your one place to gather. Make sure your friends are okay and help them collect the resources needed to throw the dinner as planned. Those are the five options. Let me know which one you would like to see next. As always, thank you for watching. Leave a like and a comment. It really bolsters my will to live. If you subscribed, you would be so cool for that. Just like the coolest. Thanks again for watching. Until I see you next, happy gaming.